Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got, he's going by Biz Coach Steve. Steve, you there? Yes, sir. Good morning. Do we not use the last name? Oh, Feld, F E L D. You use it? Let's go yeah, everyone Steve. just calls me Biz Coach Steve. So I've been well, going go with by, it. I go by Magic Brad, so I don't get confused with the Brents and the Bryans and the other Brads out there. <laughs> exactly. The only one of me. That way it cuts out the competition. Yes. <laughs> That's only one. I got to compete with myself. <laughs> so let me see. Biz coach. That's got something to do with business, doesn't it? Absolutely. Business and coaching. It's definitely not spelling because you spell it B-I-Z. That's not the way business is spelled. No, I just abbreviated <laughs> it down to make it a little faster nowadays. It works. It works. I know you got to take, can't take up too long of URLs because you're, your website is Biz Coach Steve, right? Yes. Yeah, easy to remember. See? So people Ooh. start calling me that. And next thing I know, I did the website like that. And it just started transforming. And I'm like, oh, I'm going with it. Like Marcus Welby. <laughs> so where are you? Are you in, uh, is it Arizona? Yes, Phoenix. Phoenix. You know, Lovely I've been Phoenix. to a lot of, uh, most of the states and a lot mm -hmm. of different places in the country. And I've not been to Arizona. Wow. I fly right and over, go to California. Now's probably not the right time of year to come, but <laughs> why not? We just started monsoon season, and we're in our kicking up in our summer, so we're getting the right around one ten every day. But we're going to be picking it up here a little bit more, I think. They got August showing up. You got monsoons in Arizona? Yes. I didn't know. They're they're lovely, and then we have. Haboobs, which are giant dust storms, they come in, they last for like 10, 15 minutes, dump rain, chaos, destruction, and then move on and bright skies again. <laughs> so, sounds like a tornado. Yeah. We got tornadoes up here. Oh. So you married and got kids, that kind of thing? Uh, kids, not married. How many kids you got? Uh, two. Two teens. Boy and a girl, two girls. Boy and a girl, yeah. So you got the mixture there. <laughs> yeah. So they fight like cats and dogs. It's great. There you go. <laughs> you get to be the referee. I just let them wear themselves out. And just That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Enough, they can do it. <laughs> exactly. They'll learn. And then later on, they'll love each other even more. Absolutely. That's the way it all works. <laughs> so how long have you lived in Arizona? I've been here for about 30 years. Oh, wow. I've had the house here, I should say, or home residence for about 30 years and lived here about 20. I was traveling for a living for 10 of those years, so I really not, never got to see my house. <laughs> <laughs> home is where the heart is, that's they say. That's it. <laughs> so let's talk about your business coaching. It's a, I've been in business pretty much self-employed my entire life. I started doing magic when I was a little kid. And then uh, I did that through grade school into high school. And then when I graduated in 1975, I got a job because that's what you're supposed <laughs> to do. And I worked about three years, got laid off. And I thought, where's my gold watch? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be self-employed. So I just went into being a full-time magician. That evolved into event marketing and now internet-based marketing. And uh, I like being self-employed and being in business for yourself. The fun and the joys and the headaches and the frustration, anxiety, I love it all. Are you get, seeing a, a surge in interest? Are people calling you up saying, hey, Steve, I might want to do this business thing because of this COVID deal? Yeah, actually, most businesses, most of the successful businesses nowadays have all been started in a downturn economy. So companies like Apple, Google, Dell, all of them started when the economy was taking a plunge. And right now, when the pandemic started forming, well, you had business owners, some of them were good time to leave, and then other people were getting laid off, and it's like time to get into business. So it has been a crazy time. It's been a good time for business owners to start up. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, I, with my magic that got into the event business, I just recently, I was going to say, I'm going to just get more focused on events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. That was my my lanes down the freeway I was going to take. Then all of a sudden, I just finished my event expo March 4th, and this COVID thing happened. And 
hospitality industry, travel industry, tourism, events, making it happen. So I shifted right. and doing everything. Well, right now, pretty 100% affiliate marketing. Nice. Just, just focused on the online world because that's all that's really out there these days. And what this um, pandemic thing has done, in my opinion, has gotten people to, it's forced them to be innovative and come up with something else. And they have this aha moment. They're working from home going, you know what? I think I could do this. And then they might Absolutely. say, I think I'm going to start my own business. I'm not going to rely on that paycheck. Because the thing is with an hourly paycheck is it's not scalable. Right. You got 24 hours in a day and I, I can't make any more money. You won't pay any more. That's it. <laughs> I got to pay, got to make those BMW payments. <laughs> <laughs> so with business, you can scale it, right? Absolutely. And there's always ways to scale. And I think during the pandemic, a lot of people had that idea for the business, but they were restricted from the J-O-B. Mm-hmm. And now that there is no J-O-B, it's time to go. So they're putting their ideas in action. They are getting super creative. I mean, I think it was the best thing for TikTok was the pandemic it's kind of put them on the map (laughs) but it's also opened up i think a whole bunch of new markets that we haven't even seen a lot of them yet because they're still opening up and i think it's going to help business owners in many many different ways well it's interesting i you know business has been around for a long 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 time and it's weird that people have not figured it out yet and i think if they haven't because it's it's a moving target. Yes. It's always evolving and changing. So I like to try and keep my stuff down to the basics. And I use a, a like a nature analogy of plant the seed, nurture the plant, harvest the fruit. Yes. That's all you do is gather leads, create a relationship, and they'll buy your stuff. That's it. But I think what happens with this internet thing is there's so many different ways of, like, is that a click funnels thing behind you? Uh, oh. That is, I, I used to travel for a living and I worked for musical acts oh. and that was from, I used to work with the Eagles. Oh, the really? The Eagles. So that's, that's more a... interesting than click funnels. We'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, I traveled with a company. I was a little startup at the time and I was the fifth employee. And by 10 years later, when I left, uh, they had over 5,500 employees and global domination, but they had some very smart people in the helm and running it and they hired right. So when they started building their business model, I use their analogy all the time. It's like they took the brightest minds to start the business, came up with a strategic plan, a formula, and stuck to their formula and built their business. And they hired right. Very rarely heard anyone getting fired. Mm -hmm. They just hired the right people, treated them great. And sure, you should have the right fire just expand. That's all they did is expand, expand, expand. And their whole thing was like global domination. So when we get to this level, we're going to buy these companies. Well, they got to that level. They bought those companies. So is that just, sort of the, the model that you've taken on? Is that kind of what you do with, with people? I do. It's like I got to a point you were mentioning about scalability. I used to just do consulting only. So I can only be on one, maybe two projects at a time. And then I woke up one day going, I can't scale. There's a time problem. So how do I get around this time problem? Wait, I'm doing, I looked at my business model. I'm doing 80, 90% coaching, 10%, 20% consulting. Why am I not a coach? So I shifted to more coaching. Then I started bringing on coaches underneath me. So if I get more intake on leads and clients i can pass them down to my coaches now i got a scalable business are you doing that that's an interesting model are you doing the flywheel model with that it's more uh i don't know i kind of am because a lot of times if i go out as you know as you mentioned it's like the whole speaker world conventions and everything is just kind of closed up Mm -hmm. i call it you know like the the frog's backside it kind of just closed right up (laughs) (laughs) but i used to speak bring in leads and then or engage clients and then pass them down to my coaches and then keeps their funnel filled and then bring on more coaches if we need need the capacity which there are always coaches waiting in the wings they're always saying hey if you have clients for me to coach because they love coaching not marketing 
I'll come on. And that's been what the case has been. So I've been bringing on clients and I have coaches that can help them out. What's cool about that too is your ability with the internet like this and to be able to just, you can, you can reach more people and it doesn't have to be a one-on-one -on -one coaching. It can kind of be group coaching. You have definitely expanded in the group coaching area since the pandemic hit. I've always done facilitated mastermind groups, but since the pandemic hit, I just said, you know what, I'm going to just create a group coach, group coaching program. Let's do it for free to help business owners survive through this right now because mm -hmm. they're struggling. They need help. They don't have answers. They have a lot of questions. They didn't have the right systems in place, the people, all these kind of things. Like, so we started just doing group coaching and I started doing that, just trying to help them get through it. Of course, that sometimes relates to one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. But yeah, well, that's where you can, is still great. That's where you can kick it up. It's a little more expensive to have that one-on-one -on -one stuff, but you could, you could literally just start doing like a, a coaching class, and mm -hmm. it's like a couple hours a day or whatever, and charge people like nine ninety-five a month, yeah. and you scale it out to you know twenty thousand people. You're sitting pretty good. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why I still do mastermind groups. So it's a small group about 12 people, 12 business owners, but those are the business owners who are really in it to win it. They share, they collaborate, the ideas that come out of it and their business expands like there's no tomorrow because of that environment. And it's very, I think it's like the greatest mind melting ever because I learn a lot all the time as well. How people well, are doing things. Exactly, that's what's cool is you're, you're teaching, but when you're listening to the students, all of a sudden you get these, oh, I could apply that to Steve too, over here, or yeah. Bob, or George, or Alan. Absolutely. And Very it's cool. a sharing of knowledge that's going to help all business owners, like you mentioned. It's like, people only know what they know. If they expand that knowledge in business, their business can really grow. But a lot you of them in, are so... <laughs> you work in a specific niche, like uh, fitness and health, or medical, or, or are you just kind of like, horizontal across the board. I used to niche and then I woke up one day and I realized I had 12 clients and not one of them were in my niche. So then I said, stop niching. So it's business in general. And then I started focus. I used to have another business. I'd focus on businesses 10 to 50 million and above. And I started realizing that I'm bumping into small business owner and I'm passionate about small business owners. Why am I not helping them? So my niche has been more small business owners anywhere from like a hundred thousand. And I think my last client was at 85 million. So it's, it kind of expanded my range. Yeah. I go back and forth on that. Cause you say, you got some people that say, you need to stay focused, work your niche, find your ideal customer avatar and earn, earn, earn. But that gets kind of boring talking about, you know, if you're a fitness person, push ups and sit ups and nutrition every freaking day, I want to talk about something else. Right. So you, if you expand it out, because the, the basic, um, we'll call it foundation of business is the same for any business. Across the board. And then, then you get to learn about a lot of other different mm -hmm. things. That's what's fun about doing these interviews, because I have thought about just niching it down. Mm -hmm. But I end up talking to people, like I just uh, connected with a guy that does wine tours, and he's over in, uh, in um, Spain, northern, northern oh, wow. Spain. And it's very interesting how he does his tours because he's a little bit unorthodox with the things they do. I learned that, um, you know, those barrels that they put uh, the wines and stuff in, mm -hmm. those can be up to $1,000 a piece, a yes. barrel. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> it's just a wooden barrel for crying out loud. Yeah, I used to be a general manager of an 1880s Western theme town, believe it or not, talk about weird niches. Yeah. And our trash cans were uh, whiskey barrels and we got them all from Jack Daniels. Okay. The old barrels that they, and they would sell them and we'd buy truckloads of them like every other year because they were amazing. They, yeah, they were very expensive. Yeah. That's what uh, I did an interview with the guy. He calls himself the cigarette whisperer and helps people uh, quit smoking. Wow. Um, I've talked with psychics. I've talked with UFO experts, um, people from The Secret, you know, the movie The Secret. Yeah. All those law of attraction people. So it's really fun doing these interviews because you can you just strange different 
bizarre. Um, I just, uh, Mich her name is Michelle Blood. And she was, she was one of the people in The Secret. And uh, her thing is music. And what she does is she takes affirmations and puts them into the music. So mm. you actually sing the affirmation, which helps because it, the, the resonance of it. And Rhythm, stuff, and yeah. It, yeah. So it's, it's real interesting meeting all these different people from all these different places. And if I would have niched, I would just be, you know, just let's just talk about people that do affiliate marketing. Right. That gets old after a while, especially if it's just affiliate marketing on health and wellness products. <laughs> <laughs> Even more niche. <laughs> yeah. That's what I love about business. It's if there's always a need out there, someone needs to satisfy the need. And I used, well, before the pandemic, I'd teach a class a couple times a month. ABC is a starting a business. And I keep telling people because they're entrepreneurs that are, thinking about it. Where do I start? What do I do? They're just gaining knowledge at that point. It's like, you know, you need to fill a want, a need. That's the purpose of business. And you're trading that service or product for money. That's business. It's not there just to make money. Yeah, you need to make a profit, but you got to fill a need and a want with someone. That's what business is. Yeah, I think a lot of people overthink it. And including myself, primarily myself, because <laughs> I, I think the very basics of it, but inevitably you got that shiny object thing and you start going off onto a, I was trying to reel myself back in to then all of a sudden getting crazy with, hey, I should use this, do that, do this, because there's <laughs> oh, so much out there. It's true. Small business owners, we, they love the squirrels, I call it. It's like, you see a squirrel, what do you do? You look. Yeah. And you lose focus and it's the shiny objects in them. Absolutely. Small business owners are notorious for that. It's funny how big businesses like Amazon, they are like laser like focus. They don't come off of it. That's the difference. Yeah. He's got a real interesting model because he's the middleman because the, the internet kind of kicked the middleman out. You don't need the middleman anymore because you can reach the stuff yourself. And then he stepped in and created a, Basically, he's taking money from both sides, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and th th he's the one who created the flywheel model. Yeah. And so that the, it kind of grows itself. And it's fascinating. <laughs> it is. And I think a lot of small business owners can learn from these companies. They did. They struggled at the beginning. Don't think it was an overnight success. I mean, you got to think. Amazon went through a lot of years of really bad, bad times. I mean, they couldn't even get a $10,000 loan to start the business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome to the world of all businesses. If you're passionate it about it, like you're passionate about it, they say that if, you're, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. That's so, it. So if you just uh, wake up and be happy and just learn not to be frustrated with stuff when it happens, it just happens and just move on. Yeah. yeah. Life happens and that's where my passion is. It's like I'm very passionate about seeing business owners survive and thrive. That's my passion. So what do you think is the key to success? You think there is one? The big thing is you kind of nailed it. It's determination, perseverance, but focus as well. I think we touched on all those kind of things. If they have a definite purpose in their business, goals, strategic plans, and stay on track and learn and listen, because you definitely need to take some input in, you're going to be successful. And there's a lot of businesses out there who have a, a laser-like focus, like Uber. What was their, their disruptor in the market? They were laser-like focused, and they were persistent and determined. They had a lot of roadblocks, but they also had a group of advisors and mentors around them pushing them, stay on focus, stay on track. Don't try to be something else. Stay on track. And now look at them. I think that's one of the most important things is to stay focused on track. If you wanted to use like a travel analogy, if I'm going to drive from here to Arizona, I got to know where I'm going. That's it. I don't necessarily have to continually drive 60 miles an hour. I can kind of slow down and grab a coffee and take a little break, even grab a hotel and stay for a night, but I got to stay focused. I'll never get there. <laughs> That's it. It's like, if you want to go from there to here, it's like, you need to have a plan. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. that's where a lot of business owners, they don't know their destination and they don't have a plan to get there. 
Yep, they don't know where the gas stations are. They don't know, know where, yeah. where the road is. <laughs> yeah, and they don't foresee obstacles like construction, closures, yeah. weather. And that's where I think a coach comes in. It's like, well, we know that there's going to be these things coming up. We just don't know when sometimes, but we're prepared for it. Well, Whereas this pandemic thing, mm -hmm. it, it, it knocked me for a loop because I was just going to go at it, you know, put the head down and just go forward and travel, hospitality events, tourism. And then this thing happened. So I said, oh, but it, what it did is it got me to think rather than all of a sudden feeling defeated and saying, well, I just go get a job. <laughs> it got me thinking, you know what? I don't really want to be so much in the event business where I have to be at the event. I need to orchestrate the event. I need to take care of all the people. I want to do more online stuff and take it and run it off my phone. Yeah. That's what I want to be able to do. So this pandemic has sort of forced me to get back into what I really want. So that's where I end up going. And it takes that entrepreneurial spirit, I think, to, and like you need a, a coach. I think it's important to have a coach. My wife is a coach. She does a shamanic uh, dream work. Oh, okay. And she guides people through things. And I think it's important to have a coach. This is a plug for you as a coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is oftentimes the person can't see that they don't know what they don't know. It. And then the coach can ask the right questions and, oh, wow. And then you get that aha moment. There it is. And you didn't realize it. Because right away they think, well, I don't know what to do. What do I have to do? And they don't take the first step. So true. I, I always look at it like, okay, Michael Jordan, probably the greatest basketball player ever lived. How many coaches did he have? And it's more than a dozen at any one time. He had his head coach, shooting coach, dribbling coach, fitness coach, nutritionist. He had coaches around him, but he knew the only way to get better is because they're going to see things he can't see. Mm -hmm. He knew that. And if you've watched any of the documentaries, he admits it. He's like, I needed them to see what I can't, can't see. And that pushed me to get better. That's someone who's focused so too. So true. <laughs> Well, Coach Steve, I don't know. I don't like to do these too long because people have that commodity of time. There's only 24 hours in a day, so I always keep them kind of tight. And then if you want to do another one down the road, just let me know. We can do another one if you're like launching a new product or whatever. But do you have something that people can kind of get connected with you at? You got your, your website. Is there any kind of like special freebie or something or introductory offer or something like that you'd offer people? Yeah, I do have a couple – you know, the uh, bizcoachsteve.com is my primary site. And then I also do have a couple books <laughs> above and okay. more than happy to share those. I do give them out complimentary. So one is bizcoachsteve.com backslash the 45 minute breakthroughs. And then I also have a book on like why you need a business coach. So there same thing, business, Steve, why you need a coach. And then I also have 10 secrets, speaking about the secrets, but my secrets are business secrets that business owners forget that they have. And yeah, I'd love, of the, it's all complimentary. I just do that because I want to see businesses survive and thrive. Well, it's nice to let us, someone that doesn't know, that's why I do these like this, so you get to know, like, and trust the people. Other than that, with someone that's hiding behind a profile photo and a screen name and all that and stuff. I want to see who you are and see if you're a legitimate real person. Is that a green screen behind you? What's going on? No, it's the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I think. I think that's important, the authentic thing. So this the, is my office. If the kids walk in, then I know you're real. And uh, Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't hear the dog wanting to come in the door. That's, that's what's important these days because <laughs> there's so much weird stuff out there. So I appreciate you taking the yeah. time today to be well, on. Well, thank you for therapy. having me. I will sign this off and beam it up to the universe and then get you some stuff out. I'll try and get it out to you within an hour. It sounds great. Cool. Pleasure of meeting you. Okay. Thanks coach. Thanks. Have a great day. Peace. <laughs>